Well, welcome, Jackie. It's great to have you uh, in my very unusual surroundings. These uh, daft. I th this I set this up for me live gigs, and that's really what it's for. Because um, we can't gig. Football yep. football can go on to some extent, but. It's also good to have guests here that I can talk to and people that I can talk to. And I've only really spoke to people that I know. I'm not really interested in, you know, star searching or, mm -hmm. or getting out and, you know, getting Martin Scorsese and stuff. So it's great to have you, first and foremost. A great honour to be in your attic. You know, <laughs> it's good to be here. No, it's great. And I think that particularly, you know, I haven't saw you for a wee while and for anybody that doesn't know that you and I have known one another for a few years, um, so it's easy for me to sort of try and say what I know about Jackie McNamara, but much easier for you to say it. So without getting too personal and without going uh, way, way back, give me a wee indication of, because obviously your, pa your dad was mm -hmm. involved in football yeah. and, and it'll be easy to talk about football, but I want to talk about Jackie McNamara. Um, um, so tell me a wee bit about you growing up a wee bit and where you've grew up you know, uh, and what formed you a wee bit be before we, we get to football, which is inevitable, we'll get there. Um, tell us a wee bit about who Jackie is. Uh, well, uh, started off, uh, lived in Cumbernauld. Right. Um, actually, we're Gregory's girl. My house was right at the bottom of that pitch. Oh, where the big school was? Yeah, uh, right opposite the school. Yeah. So if I had... We left there, obviously my dad was at Hibs, and we moved through to Edinburgh when I was eight, eight, eight year old. Um, if I'd stayed, obviously I probably would have went to that high school. Yeah. Uh, but we were there when they were filming Gregory's Girl, actually. And one of them had to take a retake, my wee brother was shouting, because he seen an aeroplane, <laughs> had to uh, reshoot one of the one of the scenes. But um, So that's where we started, and I moved through to Edinburgh at eight. So there's you and who else? Uh, my older brother Stephen, he's a year and a half older. Right. And my younger brother Donny, uh, he's like four years younger. So right. I was a middle child. Okay. The the mediator. Brilliant. Uh, so, yeah, I went through to Edinburgh, which was to be fair quite tough. Going For through. football reasons. Yeah, my dad was at Hibs. Ah, Hibs. Uh, was he? He was at Hibs before. I mean, we stayed at coming all, but they're travelling and we end up. You know, he was. Uh, he bought a pub and stuff and. Moving all the, moving us all through there at a young age, um, changing school, a new culture, salt and sauce. Uh, <laughs> exactly, aye. Uh, <laughs> just getting to all the change at that that time. But so you're only eight. Yep. Wow, well, that's a big change in it for yeah, an eight-year-old. Yeah, just coming up nine, uh, going into a new school, which was quite intimidating. Aye. Um, obviously, your dad playing for the Edinburgh team as well. Aye. I mean, I'm being called Jackie. It was wasn't easy. <laughs> and did they before he went to Hibs had, he, had your dad been playing for other clubs before that no he started at, he started at Celtic uh, right. and he got a really bad injury right uh, and he, he ended up swapping with Pat Stanton Pat Stanton went to Celtic from ah. Hibs and my dad went there and he always maintains that there was a, the physio and Hibs that saved his career because he's one of the early ones to get a cruise ship ACL wow. So uh, uh, they, they helped him and um, it was, you know, he had a really good career at Hibs. And that's, me growing up, that's where I kind of seen him most. I didn't really see him when he was playing with Celtic. I was too young right. to remember him at Celtic. But, you know, you know, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up uh, to left Hibs. Uh, so go and watch him every week. So is your mum and dad, are they, were they, were they Cumbernauld people? No, they were from um, Easterhouse. Oh, were they? Yeah. Both they your mum and dad? Yeah, they've been with each other. Uh, from 14. Wow. Uh, they married, my mum was 17 when she had my brother. They get married then. Right. Uh, I came along at, when she was 19. My dad was a year older than my mum. So they'd been with each other, yeah, from then and, uh, you know, right the way through. And so through, you've been through to Edinburgh and, and um, but I mean, I think, will you, I think with your dad, once you get in, I suppose anyway, and I don't know, you get into that line of, of, of your industry, your industry, which your dad shared, um, you, your expectations are, I suppose, that you can go anywhere really in it. You could be, even then, your dad and 
Paddy Crerin, who we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier on. The guys, you know, Paddy Crerin talks about moving from Celtic down to Manchester United for fifty pence a week more. That's you know, it's mental. I know. It's, uh, <coughs> but I think it's it's always been the same. The career, because it is a short career. Aye. But you, and my my dad always said that to me when I was growing up. You know, when I did start into football, it's a short career, son. You know, it's like when your dad says something to you. Aye, aye, very good. Aye. You know what I mean? You like. But it, it was. And it is, is he passionate? Is your dad? Is he passionate about his fo his football? I mean, not that it, nobody can ever force your way or push your way into some. But did he want you and your brothers to be footballers? He never pushed anything. You know, my older brother Stephen played boys club, but he wasn't. It wasn't his. He was never going to make it as a footballer. I think he's probably uh, the first to say that. You know, he he had a, a real um, problem with vision. Right. Oh wow. <laughs> well, we just you know, kick everything above the grass, Stephen. Was a dirty <laughs> Brilliant. That's he right. was uh, a dirty player. <laughs> and my younger brother Donny, he got into the arts with dancing, which uh, came later on in his, you know, when he was a teenager. But that was just purely chasing his girlfriend Aye. and going to dancing with her and doing it himself. But I always wanted to be a footballer. You know, I, I loved watching my dad playing and loved when the Hibs fans were singing his name. I, I always wanted to be. Was Aye. Did your dad ever play a, a set alongside George Best? No. Yeah. I thought Aye, that. Aye. Yeah, actually, I met him. Well, uh, he played my dad's testimonial as well. Brilliant. Uh, against Newcastle. Aye. But aye, he's, he's got some stories as you probably imagine with George at his time at Hibs. I can, I, and even I think we with, with your dad, because I, I mean I, I'm totally. This is a real shot in the darkness, but. It was funny how you hear things about, like, like hearing about your dad, because I'd always heard your dad was a right strong socialist. He is, he was, he still, he still is. He's, you know, that was a big thing at, um, at Celtic at the time. It was the, the front of the papers was Jack the Red, you know, the communist. I, I thought that, aye. Uh, and he's always kind of been that way, you know, uh, a, a real socialist, my dad. I mean, nothing wrong with that, you know. And, and uh, funny, I had a guy here earlier on who... I'd said to him to try and pop down and say hello to you because he's Peter McNamara. And Peter was the first guy that I interviewed for my drinky chinwag was to try out the room and to mm -hmm. try out. But also because he's a friend. But he's redder than a baboon's balls, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. nah, my, dad's, my dad's a bit... I think it came sort of from my grandpa uh, who was, you know, in the, 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 the trade union man and he worked uh, the papers and he worked in the... The shipyards as an engineer, uh, and he, he moved down to, to London to Fleet Street to work in the, the press with the papers uh, wow. under Maxwell, and he was a big trade union man. And so, I think when my dad had my, my mother brought uncles, you know, uh, he, my dad had three other brothers, but they were uh, very much into that socialist side. And was it frowned upon then, you do you think, socialism uh, and football yeah, anyway? Yeah, I mean, I think so, especially there, the fact that it made the paper and. Uh, you know, I remember him, uh, he, my dad told the story, like, he, he went back to my grandpa and said about the, the front of the paper. And uh, so I think it was at the time when the guy, Robin Cousins, came out as, as gay. Aye. And he said to my dad, look, you know, I'm in the front of the paper. My dad said, oh, it could be worse, son. It could be another story <laughs> with Aye. Robin Cousins. Aye. Exploiting the man's sexuality. Yeah. And do you think, um, I mean... So you as a wee guy, you and your your two brothers. So it's a right male house. Yeah. With your mammy and and, it's, and so. For a young guy, what's it? I'm trying to so that we can understand who Jackie McNamara is. Did you feel? Was it just natural thing to be in the spotlight? Did it? For instance, do you think it made it any easier when you were young? that when you went on to be a football player, that because you had been exposed to that with your dad at Hibs and, uh, and you know? I think it, it changed so much, just I think it was a start to change, whereas, you know, when I was fortunate enough to, to kind of get my mouth, I hated, I hated the spotlight. I hated, uh, was really shy. I was quite uh, withdrawn. You see the interviews when I first, at Dunfermline and at Celtic, when I first went to Celtic, I was terrified of doing interviews. Uh, I just so uncomfortable and, can imagine that. Even going into certain rooms with people I didn't know or having to go and do a speech and I was totally out of my comfort zone. You did, know, he, did he get any media training or did he? No, did, no not no, then. It was just, you know, uh, I'd been there at Celtic uh, 
that first season. I came in in October with Tommy, which was probably one of my uh, most favourite uh, seasons. You know, my first, and I hadn't lost a game in the league. Right. And we lost the league to Rangers. And I won the Young Player of the Year uh, my first season when I came in. And Rangers won the league that day with Gascoigne. And uh, uh. They, they beat Aberdeen. Gascoigne got the Player of the Year. And interviewed me. It was it was Ken Douglas who gave me an award. Who was my hero growing up, and played with my dad as well. And I was fortunate enough to play under him as well at Celtic later on with John after John Barnes left. But he gave me an award, and I seen the video back, and I was like, oh, "What was I doing?" You know what I mean? Because that day, like, it was the day the Rangers won the league against Aber home to Aberdeen, and they asked me a question, and and the, I think it was Chick Young. And they gave me a award and they said, oh, Tommy Burns wasn't here, your gaffer wasn't here watching the game, he was at Walk Home. And, and I was like, I was, a, I was away jet skiing. I was like, what, 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 what did you have <laughs> You know what I mean? I just didn't know what, just didn't know what to speak uh, of, just out of my comfort zone. And I was like, what, what, what am I doing? Uh, well, it's, you know it's, it doesn't come naturally, all that. No. You have to you engage in that. So I, I'm trying to figure out, with you and your two brothers, and I mean, because you're going and watching Jackie Senior, it, I mean, I know there'll be lots of other things in your life apart from football, because football, although it moulds you, and I'm sure it does, um, it's not just who you are, that's not all you are, you know mm -hmm. I mean? Even as a young man, a young laddie, you know, you're moving from from, uh, from Cumbernauld to, to Edinburgh. What else What else are you thinking at that age? What else, are, you think, are you always kicking a ball or are you...? Yeah, I was. I mean, always? I, hate, I hated school. Aye. I hated... Did you do all right in school? I could have. Right. If I wanted to. Right. You know, there's certain things I struggled with. I think it maybe a wee bit dyslexic with certain things or a laziness towards it. But um, I just hated it. I just didn't want to, you know, we'd be in a class and uh, maybe 40, 50 people in your class. You know what I mean? If you put your hand up, if you did know the answer, you were a swat. You know what I mean? You were uh, a, and I just, I just didn't like it. I and just, is that, you think that's because you were shy? Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. That didn't help. It didn't help, and I think it's something I'd kind of struggled with in early age. Just, and it's even right through my career at Celtic. Even like my last game was my testimonial. You see me there. I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't never comfortable and with adulation. Like, with yeah. adulation as well, and you're clapping everybody and they're singing your name and that. It's just like well, sing his name, you know, uh -huh. Larson's name or somebody else's name. I was just, I don't know. I was just very, un, very uncomfortable for me. It was just. Doing my job, I was just playing football and something uh, I loved and I, I was passionate about, and uh, I just didn't really want to do the rest of the bit. And I think as a wee laddie as well, you know, you don't have the, you didn't get the capacity as a young boy to understand that that might be the thing. I mean, it's not something that Jackie Senior can say to you, "All right, Jackie, you're not just going to be a football player. That you have to prepare for this. You can't prepare for that. That no. just comes with the territory." I remember doing something years ago with Big Packy for Nordoff Robbins, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I don't know Packy, you know, but he appeared to me not the most media friendly or, mm -hmm. or into, he's certainly media friendly now, but yeah. at that particular point, and I thought, God, that's, that's, I just expected him to be comfortable in the situation, but he wasn't, no. you know, and uh, I think you just, as time goes on, you get more, uh, com not comfortable with it, but you, you, you adapt, I think, uh, to your surroundings and what you're doing. So, so you're, you know, kind of moving on a wee bit. You're not. You're doing fine in school, but you can't wait to leave. But there must be times where, you, like, is your school team any good, for instance? Uh, school team were all right. I played boys' club, but I mean, I was I was a late developer in terms of growth and. Right. You know, when I left school, I uh, actually had a really bad leg break at fifteen. Wow. I played with Dinah Hibbs, a local boys' club team. And uh, the manager brought along his pal, who was in his 30s, to training. And I put the ball in the corner, and this guy came out, he was a Rangers fan, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he came around, and he, the two legs came out, just as I plucked my leg down, and he, he snapped both my bones. Uh, it was, honest, it was horrendous. Uh, and I'd, you know, I was out for seven months at 15, when every day all my pals were getting signed up. I mean, at 13 and 14, I, I was down in trials at Man United with a lot of boys and looking at there because I was, I wasn't, I was small, really small, but uh, I wasn't, you know, it was like, oh, he'll grow later on. And it wasn't until 
until I broke my leg that I actually took that kind of uh, stretch, if you like. Not, not that I was a, a tall guy with any means, but no. I was proper, probably maybe the second smallest in my year. And what, what's, because your mum obviously knows about football mm -hmm. with your dad. Um, what's your mummy saying? Does she want you to be a footballer? Or does she just want what's, what Jackie wants? Aye, I think because the three of us were, were different. Yeah. Uh, were different personalities, you know, and I th you know, I've got three kids myself, uh, and they're all different. Yeah. You know, I, I remember seeing my brother a couple of years ago, I, you know, I said, we're brothers, and we're, we're out having a drink together. I said, if we weren't any brothers, I don't think we would hang about together. And he took offence to that. You know what I mean? I was like, he said, what do you mean? I said, well, we've not got a lot in common. Yeah. You know, your pals, I wouldn't hang about with your pals, and you wouldn't hang about with my pals. Uh -huh. You know, if we weren't any brothers... Aye. But he was like, I think he, he got it later on what I was Aye. trying to say to him, Aye. you know what I mean? We're all different. Aye. Same with uh, my younger brother, Donnie. Aye. He, he's a, a great boy, you know what I mean? But we're all different. We got, on, we got on really well, the three of us. But I was fortunate, you know, I, I, I managed to be a footballer. I wanted to be growing up. Whereas I don't think they really wanted to be a footballer. But there was no, like, jealousy. They were always proud of, oh, you, know, course, you know, they're always on on my side with, uh, with everything. And know, I guess you know. because, again, your dad hadn't paved the way, but you all understood it. Yeah. You know, because uh, regardless of what we think about the great crowds at Chelsea and, 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 and you know, and Old Trafford and Celtic Park and Ibrox and stuff, the crowds were much bigger back then. I know. And, you know, uh, they double the size. And more aggressive. <laughs> Aye. And, and in your face. Uh -huh. And so, I mean, I suppose your old man kind of in a certain way knew, knew what you were up for and you know, and Donnie and him would have been used to that anyway because yeah. they've seen you. Th th I think it's a surprise. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'd love to be able to do what you've done and play music and Aye. go on and entertain. Love to play a, a, an instrument. And, Aye. you know, I mean, it's not to show off, it, it's, it's a talent. Aye. But when you're, when I played, when I was young, I could, you know, after a certain age, I could, it's like you go into, like maybe a box, you're going to fight. You know, off the park, you're nice, quiet, go about your business, go back to your family, but on the park, like, you know, you're going to fight, ah, you're going to war, you're going to, you know, I mean, it's installed in you, it's like, and as soon as the game's finished, it's back, you know, you calm yourself down again. Aye. You know, and some some people don't have that, they don't have that wee switch, and I think, I think you need it, I think Aye. you need, you know, I mean, if you're going to a gig, you're probably nervous before the gig, or you're just going to be here, what's coming on today, or... But you change when you're on it. Oh, you know, you, you have to. You yep. know, it's like a boxer going into a ring. Yep. You yep. know, you, he, he's not the same out the ring when he goes home to his family. Yeah. He's not fucking punching the walls and going him crazy. Well, he yeah. might, we might be, I suppose. But no, you're absolutely right. And I think that when you, we were on, we played with the Pretender last, uh, not last year, two, two years ago, Kelvin Grove, you know, the big yeah. outdoor arena. And Joe and I were, you know, we'd been in that zone anyway for, for we were younger and stuff. As we would go to the stage or to, to like be on the, mm -hmm. the cusp of the stage, Joe would turn around to me. Joe's a me Tory Glenn guy, lives in Windsor, mm -hmm. lived there, lovely life. You know, you're like a bit like yourself, grown up kids, and uh, and I kind of turned around to to Joe's. We're getting on the stage, big packed, you know, maybe two or three thousand people in the audience, and Joe kind of looked at me and went, "Let's get into them." <laughs> and I'm like, God, I've never heard that for years, because yeah. that's what it was like, right. you know, we would sing, you know, a song before you went on stage and we gathered round, not dissimilar to like a huddle, but yeah. it's the same thing, you're yeah. gathering round, yeah, exactly. and it's like, Joe's the, Joe would be much more, uh, 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 it'd be much more focused than I am, you know, I'd be getting in like, building it's a China shop. I think I'm... When I was younger, I would have been more nervous, and uh, like my first kind of old firm game. So the night before, you're you're uh, you're thinking about it, you know, and you, you you use a lot of nervous energy. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, you can say, oh, oh, I'd love to score the winner tomorrow. Aye. You know and do you I mean? think a, about that? Do you well, think I about did that? when I was younger. Right. And then my first old firm game was, I'd love to score the winner, and then and then you've the other side, you go. What if I make a mistake tomorrow? What if I cost the goal and cost the game? What if I, you know, what I mean, wow. the, 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 the fear and it, your mind sets in. But as I got older, I never thought about it, you know. And I, I think 
a lot of that can be with the people you're around in the dressing room. Uh, you know, that at that point, a lot of it was quiet. You know, going to the games, people just focused, you know, going about their business. Yeah. And then with, with Martin's team, we had guys in there that would, you know, you wouldn't think we were going to a game. Uh, you would think that they're away in a fucking busman's holiday. Oh, you know aye, what I mean? aye, aye, aye. Like Chris Sutton would be there playing these stupid games or, and it was distraction. Yes. You know, like, we're, you're actually not thinking about driving up to the front of Ibrooks and there's a couple hundred people in there wanting to call you everything and intimidate you before you go in there and then, you know, 10,000 uh, Celtic fans and Eastern Mill Rangers, like, going to war again. Uh, you know what I mean? So when I was younger, I would have thought about it. But as I started to mature and handle things better, Aye. I could I could flip that wee switch. So when's the first time, Jackie? That, that so you've you've come through school and you've and, and as you say you get your bad injury when you're fifteen. Mm -hmm. When's the first time that you think, uh, or when's the first time maybe even really that you say to your dad, I think I'm going to make it, Dad. I, I I think it's just my personality. I I just. And I think sometimes it irritates uh, people around me because they maybe see it as being so laid back. I don't give a lot away. Yeah. Don't face. I look at a miserable wee shit. Yeah, yeah. Times, you know, right, I look yeah. sad and everything else. But I like a laugh. Aye. But I think, yeah, I remember my dad driving past my old school. Uh, this is before I, I think I went into Dunfermline. And then I got caught, I got caught skiving school. And there's a guy painting my primary, old primary school fence. And it was like, this fence went on forever, you know, the the iron, the black iron going to be down. He said, uh, what are you going to do if you don't make it? I said, I'll kill. paint the fence, be a painter or decorator. And I didn't need, mean it. You know, I wasn't even thinking Demeaning about... Demeaning to the, no, I, to I, the I, trade, I, I just, I was never, you know, I, I, was, I was never, I wouldn't say, I always knew I was going to be a football player because I, I didn't. Aye. But I had a, a real single-mindedness that my dad always talks about. Which helped us in management, helped us be the captain of Celtic, Aye. helped us stay at Celtic for 10 years. Aye. You know, and that's, to be honest, that's what kind of, and I think it was probably from my mum's side. My mum, sorry, not my mum's side, but my mum was uh, steely, determined. My dad was a fighter. Aye. My dad would just roll his sleeves up in the pub and go out in the scrap and fight. My mum, my mum had a real, you know, a real steeliness and a, a determination, I think. I get a lot of that from from her as well as the the other bit from my dad, uh, which is a great combination because you mm -hmm. know quite often if you get too much of one thing and not enough of the other, then yeah. you're caught in the mire somewhere. And I think that you know, and it's good to know that that, that even a young Jackie McNamara, and it's good for young people to know that it, even a, a a guy as successful as you and you had an amazing career um, could be so story at that point to say, well. You know, if there's 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 something else for me. If you know, if if it's not football, it'll be something else. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it's not, this is just a, I'm not solely driven just for that. You yeah. know, what I mean, and that's not my reason d'etre or raison d'etre. No, I mean, I think even I think as a as a player, the hardest thing to come to terms with when you're when you're playing is finishing Aye. because you're you're a relatively young guy. You know, I was I was fortunate. I, you know, when I went after I went there, I had a few moves and different else, but I wanted to keep playing as long as I could. Aye. And I uh, started writing at the end of that, just before I went into management at Partick Thistle. I, had, I, I broke my leg. So I broke my leg at the start of my career, and I broke my leg at the end of my career. Wow. You know, at uh, 37, uh, I get I get metal, metal plate in and got a bone graft in at that age. Aye. Uh, and I, I wanted to finish in my terms, played a few games. And I was coming to terms with, with finishing, but I was lucky enough I got a, a shot in at management at Partick Thistle, just yeah. as I'd kind of written that sitcom and he kind of done the music for it. Uh -huh. uh, but I found that therapeutic. I found that, again, at that point, I didn't know what I was going to do. I'd done my coaching badges. I looked uh -huh. at things and I go, is it for me? Is it not for me? Is it, do you know what? It's what football's probably the, the, the biggest thing that I know about. And yeah. I think they've got, you know, attributes there with people and try and get the best out of people and pass on mm -hmm. my my experiences and my, my wisdom with it. and and to be honest I had a right good go at it up until uh, the last bit of Dundee United where it kind of turned because because of my contract and the way that you know the 
everything came out. You know, it became so difficult, the perception and you know, actually, you know, step like step back from it now. And I think my, my years at Celtic and that single mindedness helped us through a really difficult period. I bet you. Yeah, you know, I bet mentally, you because I think a lot of people would have went under. Aye. Um, and I, th I mean, obviously, that that youthful determination that you had, not even determination, just kind of knowing that, you know, it almost sounds like you're knowing as if I'm going to be all right, even if, you know, because you know, I'm, I'm going to find the woman that I'm going to marry or the girl that I'm going to marry and, and I'm going to have kids. And, and that's a great side to what Jackie McNamara does. But there's loads of other, you know, yeah. parts of Jackie McNamara that, that finish the jigsaw here. Yeah. You know, there's the, the there's the, the husband and there's the soon-to-be father, you know. Mm -hmm. Aye, the limelight's all right. We can get that. That's fine. That comes with the territory. Yeah. But there's more to, you know, that's what I think about even speaking to you. You know, it's, it's more interesting to me to find out who Jackie is rather than finding out, you know, mm -hmm. whether it was a punch up at half time in the tunnel, you know, anybody can talk to you about that, you yeah. know what I mean, it's, it's, to me it's more... But people like, think they know you, they see you every aye. Saturday, you know what I mean, they, they see you and they do the interviews and, you know, we spoke about that earlier, aye. The interviews, you're fucking standing to lies, aye. You're, 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 you're a politician now, you're protecting, as a manager, you're protecting people, aye. as a player, you're protecting the club, you're protecting people you don't want to by because you can't tell the truth. Exactly. You know, he's an arsehole, he's an arsehole, he let us down the day, he doesn't want to be here. He's you know what I mean you see it you see uh. it this this season. You see it every weekend in football. Uh. Every manager now they're they're like it's like the government, the politicians, you know, they stand up in front of the camera. And they have had media training. They have ah yeah. they have had media training with us yeah. I just I get sick of the bullshit. Right. So how old are you then you you've you're in Dunfermline and you're playing in the first team in Dunfermline. Are you married yet? Uh, I got married uh, at, when I was at Dunfermline just before I went to Celtic. At right. 21 I was married young. That's good though. Uh, yeah, I think it, it kind of helped me to be honest. Uh, because I'd, you know, you've know, <coughs> met my wife but we, the good thing is you know, we, we met each other. I was 18 year old uh, and... It wasn't for my money, it wasn't for being a football player, I wasn't anything at that point. Uh, so we'd brilliant. been with each other right at the start. Like your mum and dad? Yeah. 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 And I think um I think that that was a major factor in in helping me just focus on my football and uh, keeping the head feet in the ground. Where did you meet? In my dad's pub. Brilliant. Uh, uh, my pa uh, my dad used to it was a busy pub in Musselboro I had. Uh, and uh, she my dad used to they got so busy, you'd have to close the door and then maybe let one in and out and he went to the toilet and uh, I used to just let the girls in. Oh, aye. <laughs> As you do. Uh, As you do. And, uh, aye, so I kind of met her that night and we've never seen each other so, ever since. So when you, when you and, and, and Helen, when you eventually do get married, is it a media wedding? Is the media there? Or no, are you still not, no, you still not recognised at that point? No, uh, at no. 21, who are you playing with? Dunfermline. Dunfermline. Sam, uh, Sam worked in the, the building society. She worked in the bank. Uh, I'm calling her Helen, Sam. Aye, uh, Sam, yeah. Samantha. Yeah. Um, she, uh, we stayed in Dunfermline as well when I was playing there. Right. Uh, that when I signed with Celtic, so we, we were married in the June and I signed with Celtic in October. Uh, so I was only there, we only married a few months before we moved to Celtic. Then uh, we moved back over to Musselburgh and travelled through to Glasgow every day for 10 years. And how did she deal with the media, do you think? She just stayed away from it. She really? actually used to like football before. Uh. I mean, Sam Sam was only, I think she came to be like three of my games in my whole career at uh -huh. Celtic. And she used to go to watch a couple of Celtic games before, like when she was younger. And but she went to... She went to the cup final when I scored against Tibb. She was at that. Right. She was at the FA Cup final uh, with the families. Uh, and I think she had been to one other game. Uh, is she in Edinburgh, Lance? Musselburgh, aye. So did she, was she a high beer or a, a hat jambo? Or Celtic. A Celtic. So she supported Celtic she was back then. Her grandpa and her pals were, she was like fan a couple of times she would go through in the bus and stuff. But aye. just mental how things kind of work out. And aye. But she, she'd, uh, she, 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 she didn't go to all the games and, I quite liked that because Aye. she didn't know a lot about football. 
Aye, you know, and, and also it's your job. Exactly. It's you don't, the you don't go, you, you know. see a lot of them, and, it, and then I think that just after that, there's all about wags and everything else. Aye. And it was just like, you know, I don't want to take my work home with me. No. I don't want you asking me why I've made an arse of that pass or didn't they score Aye. there or. <laughs> and also, I mean, Donnie, when they want his wife to go to his work, exactly. You know, I mean, it's, it's the same thing, and it? it's a bit mm -hmm. like you're in the music industry, and people say, you know, I mean, I remember my mum coming to like a gig in the Barlands when we were playing it, and she hadn't been mm -hmm. to really any of my gigs because it wasn't really somewhere where your mammy went. She yeah. didn't go to the Barlands. Anyway, we we play the Barlands, and then invite my mammy, and because she's never really been to any of my gigs as such, mm -hmm. she walks in, she goes. Well, it's a big hall, isn't it, son? <laughs> and I said, aye, it is, Mum, aye, it's great. And she said, who else is playing? <laughs> she thought maybe uh, it was like another six bands. Six or something. And I was like, no, it's just, just us. And she went, Brilliant. oh, for goodness sake. So it is a bit like that, because, you know, like, on the road, you never took, you know, so I suppose for, for Sam, Jackie's going to his work. Yeah. So that's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think, as I said, I think that was healthy. Aye. You know that I kept, I kept both of them separate. I think the family was the, the kids when they were growing up. We stayed in Edinburgh out the way. We, you know, uh, we kept my, myself private and as much as we could. Of uh, course, uh, I think protecting the kids uh, uh, from from anything. And their, uh, their kind of lies in. So what, what you and Sam are married. You're, you're travelling from Edinburgh all the time. Uh, at any point in this part of as you're getting older and the kids are coming along and stuff, is there any point even at, at that point where you're thinking, where is my out in this? Where, w w what point will I finish? As a professional footballer, always thinking about that? No, I, I, I didn't always look into things. Right, uh, as deep as that? No, I'm, even now in life, I, I go like can day to day and week to week. Aye. I don't look, I wish I could do that in there. But I think it, when you're at Celtic, you're in a bubble. Right. You're in this wee bubble and you think that everybody else is around it. Yeah. And you're just focusing on, you know, because you're playing Champions League game or you're playing in a European yeah. game. So you're, when Martin was finished, it was like hotel three or four nights out of the seven. Right. So you're away for the, they are, stay in the hotel, you know, we went, we went to have our holidays yeah. for a couple, couple of weeks in a year. Aye. It'd be in uh, June. I was like, I don't want to go to a hotel. I'm in a hotel all the time. Whereas Aye. Sam's like, well, I don't want to go and stay in a villa and cook. I cook all the time and clean all the time. I don't. Want to, I want to go to a hotel. So it was. Yeah, you know I mean, it was. It was different. And do you ever come home after the games, even if Sam's not watched the game? Do you ever come home and, and need to talk to her about it, or would she just say, or would that just be Jackie's work and he doesn't blather about it when he comes I home? I tried not to. Right. I tried not to take it home. Why though? Because. I couldn't dent about it then. Right. Same as a manager. Uh, you, she would ask you there, you know, and she would hope that I'd, I'd, uh, I'd won because I'd be in a, a good mood and everything else would be fine and I'd be able to sleep all right and that. As a manager, as a player, you would look at your own performance. As a manager, you'd come home and when I was, when I'd won and I was happy, I'd wake up all excited. I'd make me wake up at two or three in the morning, you know, I'd fall asleep and go and get, you know, come in, uh, have a tea, Watch your telly, watch match your day. I'm out. Wow! You just know, the whole nervous just, energy just, just stopped. You, sometimes, like you played as a manager, and you're uh, standing inside the park kicking every ball, and you know you're exhausting. It is. It's it's the it's a mental tiredness. It's uh, consuming. It really is consuming. And but if I was enjoying it, I was wake up early and excited for the next game. Uh, but as if I had a bad result and a defeat, I'm waking up middle of the night. Who am I going to play next week? Who can I trust? Uh, Who's this? You know. Who's got a problem? He's got a problem. It's there. It's as a as a player, you just thought about yourself uh, and how you done in the game, and you know. And see when you were, you know, before you got into the management and before, I mean, because there's no doubt about it, Jackie. And it's easy to blow smoke up your arse, but you were a Celtic legend. You were a laddie that you kind of you remind me of Kieran Tierney. You're that kind of guy, you know. You had that baby face. You move from Dunfermline, you come to Celtic Park, there's this wee baby face guy arrives. Mm -hmm. And you think, who's this young kid and what, what's he going to do? I mean, he exploded onto the Celtic team the way Kieran Tierney in a similar similar way yeah. did. And, uh, and, and, and in a diff different day, I think you would have went down to England and excelled. You know, you had that motor, like, 
do like tear teary hands. But tell me when you were when you were young, Jackie, and 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 the, the move from Dunfermline happens, and and then you move to Celtic Park. Where does Big Jackie help you? Where, do, can you phone him and say, Da? Or no, did, he was no. Um, I always look at things. I mean, he, my dad done my deal. Right. Didn't have an agent at the time. My dad done my deal to Celtic, and and he, he, he was like, I've let you down, son, because it, was, it wasn't a great deal. Right. But okay. I was, to be honest, you know, I can be bothered. Ah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going Celtic. to play for Celtic and yeah. things. Look, I wasn't there that side of it. And, um, you know, I, I, and coming from Dunfermline to Celtic, they needed to, to know that I could handle it. And I was there. And it was only, a, in fairness, the gaffer, he, uh, Tommy Burns, pulled in uh, a few months later. He said, I want, to, I want you to put your wages up. I want to give you an extra year. So I ended up signing an extra year. And then my wee Fergus McCann saying, oh, you're, you're in again. You know, you're, you know, <laughs> sending, sending an extra year, like four months after I'd been there, which I did. Fergus, well, I wasn't notoriously happy. <laughs> liked to hold on to his <laughs> money, didn't Oh, you're yeah. in again, you know, there. And I'd, I'd signed again. And, but, but I'd shown that I could handle the step up uh, to Celtic that time and never really thought about it. Yeah. But I always... It was always a for me. It was always a challenge, you uh, know. That first bit with, with the gaffer, uh, and everybody expected that you, you know, get down the line, up and down with Simon, the great relationship. Then the dynamics changed a wee bit in the second year with the gaffer bringing in Decanio and a Maverick. You know, I'm Simon was maybe not playing as much. And you, you had Pierre and Cadet and Andy Tom and Decanio, who played for Decanio. Aye. You know what I mean? It was about him and Oh, with the gold boots. I had a that relationship one, yeah. with Simon and I'd overlap, I'd overlap the canyon, I'd overlap the canyon and he's checking in, checking in, checking in back there. I was like, oh, I can't. Then obviously the gaffer lost his job and Vim Jansen came in Aye. who didn't want his full backs getting forward. Right. So we lost the first couple of games the, the nine the, the year we stopped the ten in a row. Yeah. And I had to reinvent myself further forward, which Again, roll the sleeves up. Uh, my turning point was scoring against Liverpool in the FA Cup. Right. Playing wing back, then I played right midfield, further up the park. Uh, it's the only time I played there in my career, and I had uh, one Player of the Year, uh, Players Player of the Year that year, and we stopped to ten, and never played that position again. <laughs> but some somehow something tells me that maybe your dad done you a favour because sometimes. You know, this is just things that you hear about and things that you hear about for certain, yeah. but a lot of different aspects in life. Yeah. But sometimes making a deal easy for somebody can make the deal happen. So maybe by the way of Jackie Senior making the deal. To be honest, it would it would it would have been anything at that point. Aye. It wasn't. It was never. It was never about the money. It was never about that. And, it, and to be honest, it never was. Even up until the last bit when uh, when I left Celtic. It was my last game was my testimonial, but I didn't know it was going to be my last game. I thought, you know, that I was going to be there and try and finish my career at Aye. Celtic, and really, I was really disappointed how it finished. I'd love to have known and thanked and waved to everybody to and everyone else, yeah. but they made it out to be a bit money at that point. I and, know. and the people there, obviously, they know it wasn't. I went down to England, the way because of the way I was brought up, I went down for a hell of a lot less than what Celtic offered me in the end, uh, out of principle, because uh, I'd given Glenn Hoddle my word, I gave Celtic the chance to sort it out. You know, I'd waited uh, a good bit after the season had uh, finished, uh, after my testimony, and people that know me know it wasn't about that. You yeah. know, and that's the wee things that hurt me the most. The wee guy came in, striking, who'd been at the club two minutes, I'd been there ten years, yeah. and he could turn that ten years in a second yeah. by what he said about oh we had a deal and then Jackie turned and asked for money I was like what are you talking about uh, you know a wee bit there and you're like because uh, I, I remember that confusion because uh, you were it was, and it, it was never it was uh, never about that he you know Martin Martin pulled a, a couple of years in a five years in his office a week before he left and told us about Gordon coming in and you know he said look I've told him there's, there's five guys to, you can depend on it. Uh, uh, myself Chris Sutton Alan Thompson Stilly and, and Lenny, yeah. And I was first to go. Then Gordon had a, a thing with, with Chris. With Chris, uh, had, uh, thing with his jaw in that media game. Never spoke to him. He he went. The next one was Tomo. The only one that survived was Lenny. Uh, 
<laughs> and he did survive. Well, when he was out of contract, the same time as me, but as soon as, obviously, I'd left, he, then he stepped in and Aye. kept the tunnel. But it isn't, isn't it, I mean, I don't know how serendipity, how it moulds or how it works itself all the time or how it unfolds, but it's almost like you're, 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 you're da paving the way. Can you imagine, and I don't, I don't again, I don't know anything about Darren Jackson, but... but but you can imagine Darren at that point. Just this is just a pure fictitious, uh, you know, mm -hmm. situation where Darren goes in and plays hardball, and then you don't sign for Celtic. You know how sometimes, yeah. by way of your dad just put, paving the way for you, mm -hmm. saying, "Listen, you want him. He wants to come." Yeah. You know, uh, you know that maybe yeah. that's just part of. I think between that and I'll, I always go back to it, and I think right, is it a fad thing you that was it there? Would it have just the testament to think it's wee Jackie he's, he's just going to stay there and he's, you know I was expecting my third child there he's, he's not want to go and move away down there he's no which I wasn't no you know I wasn't and that it was it was tough it was a real tough a Aye. tough thing and it, it was tough to leave but I had been brought up a certain way to stand up for myself and do you know what I'm just I'm captain I'm I've got a lot of things to deal with a lot of other things there I'm playing the same team as him even though he, you know, one of them that signed a new deal uh, was paying more than tax and what they offered me to stay. Aye. But it was a principle. I'm like, I deserve a wee bit of my ass. As a testimonial, was the fans, you know what I mean? It was yep. the fans there. Aye. They the, paid the, for that. Aye. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't a big earner at Celtic, I never was, but I, I knew I was comfortable with what I, what I was doing. I knew I was, you know, three or four times uh, less than some of them, which is fine, even, yeah, as, yeah. even as a captain. Yeah. I wasn't bothered what anybody else was getting, I knew what I was getting. Yeah. But at that point there, when, when that came up, you know, I'd asked for a, a three-year contract, when I, again, after Seville, the 2003-2004 uh, season, when we yeah. romped the league, I came in after Seville when I was captain, I'd lost my mum, and I was uh, the sports writer's player of the year. Yeah. And I, I was out of contract then and I asked for a three year deal to finish my career and they only gave me one. Aye. I was like, I'm 29, you know, let's see, you know, we're taking up with 31, 32. Aye. Um, but they gave me a one year. So then the following year, I'm, you know, I wanted a, an, another two that Aye. I wanted the year before. So it was a wee bit disappointing uh, that Aye. side of it. But, you know, as I said, I've been in management myself, it's a business. You, understa you understand. Yeah. Sometimes like why? Well, I've not got a, a real sell value. I've got a value to the team as a captain, mm -hmm. probably more than what you know. I'm younger than him, but I've got you know. I'm, you, you assess everything yourself. You go, you know. He brought in uh, three or four players to replace me, Gordon. He brought in Adam Virgo for four and a half million. He brought in uh, Paul Telfer, uh -huh. who was older than me. You know, for a lot more money. Uh, Mo Kamara, the left back. So uh -huh. I could cover the couple of positions yeah so it wasn't a good business one not to give me less than what uh, Telfer was on uh, and I think that even you know because there are things that are that are often left you know uh, in life even in general you know what I mean you're, you're getting your third kid I mean that's more important I know than anything that Celtic are ever doing for you you know what I mean and you know yeah. that that's always going to be there you know you know the family units is stronger than anything, you know. And, but by the same token, you still need, as we, you know, everybody needs to eat, yeah. you know. So you need money, for, to, you know, for your kids and you, you need some sort of security because you've mentioned earlier on, fo football, you don't play football when you're 55. I know. You know, uh, and, and not many guys, you know, have got that, th you know, maybe that young, uh, that, that's shown when you're 15, that young McNamara drive where... Where you know you're coming out of football and you're thinking, well, you know, I'm going to go to Thistle, uh, uh, and I, uh, uh, not only am I going to do well at Thistle, I'm looking beyond that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, this is what this is just the start for me as a manager. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in a way, you're you're fortunate that you've got that. But by the same token, you can't deal all the cards. There's somebody else dealing the cards, whether it's me, Fergus, mm -hmm. or Gordon Strachan, and and they'll they won't maybe share the same opinion as a young. Mm -hmm. and, and older and wiser Jackie McNamara so I think that as you're leaving you know because we've kind of shot through your career mm -hmm. you know because again I want to know about Jackie yeah when, when when Jackie when it comes now to the point that 
that journey which the media talk about from Jackie going down to Wolves that night and all the, the shites coming back up the road mm -hmm. that you haven't got any control over because the media will say and do what, what yeah. they want and surmise that they know why Jackie's going down because Darren Jackson said he's going down there and this is what you're doing and all the shite goes back and forth yeah. up down the road. So you've landed in Wolves and with the greatest, greatest respect to Wolverhampton, you know, you haven't exactly landed in the Hamptons. Yeah. You know, you're in Wolverhampton. Yeah, it's tough. It tough. must have been, you know, and I mean, it's, and it's a, they're a, they're a sturdy footballing mm -hmm. crowd. Yeah. You know, and, um, and I like that kind of working class thing, but, but you've arrived, you must have arrived down into the Cauldron's Den down there. I mean, I, I think the, to be honest, the biggest uh, selling point was Glen Hoddle. Right. I just, you know, it, he actually, he, he said he tried to get me before uh, when I wasn't uh, a regular one with Martin. We went down, we played Tottenham, he was at Tottenham at the time. Right. And I played uh, centre mid at White Hart Lane and I thought I'd done all right and he must have inquired then about me but Martin never never said. And I wasn't a regular starter, I lost my place to Didi Agat when I got injured away with Scotland. Right. And Martin played Didi the wing back against St Martin at home and again having to reinvent my self position when I went to left centre half or centre midfield or whatever, or left midfield. And which I was, to be honest, I didn't. I wasn't bothered where I played. I, right. I loved playing. I loved starting, and I liked playing different positions. It wasn't bothering it. I, I liked learning other positions and being part of the team and helping the team right. and adjusting. So that was never an issue at that point. You know where I was playing. I was just desperate to to be involved. I mean, what happens when? Just to try and understand, because I don't understand what happens when you when you come out of Celtic or any club for that matter, and you arrive down in a club. Like Wolverhampton, a good club and obviously a good manager, Glenn Hoddle. What are, what's the process when you get in the door? And do you know how to knit into a team, or do you, do you have to learn that? Just or? learn it. Um, I, I found it difficult. Uh, purely the because I was used to winning. Uh. You know, my first my first game for Wolves in the league was away at Southampton. Uh, we drew nil nil. Had a nice comfortable. Debut, I played all right. right. Uh, up to the last wee bit, I got booked near the end. A wee guy, Theo Walcott, made his, <laughs> he came on as a young kid, a wee flying machine, and I, I took him out. And right. a yellow card near the end. But um, but I was like, after the game, I said, oh, fucking, you know, we're drawn. Shite, we've dropped two points. Uh. But they were like, oh, that's a good point, a good away point, away from home. And that's, when you're used to winning, you know, at Celtic, Aye. we had to win every game, and you know, I hadn't to readjust that side of it. When, when that's installed in you, winning every game, and and I think that's why a lot of people struggle when they go to the club. Aye. You know what I mean? No and do the know. fans, how do you fit? See, when you play an early game for like Wolves and you've been at Celtic and all that, can you feel the expectation of the fans for you, or, or do you? Because I know you've, you've, you've obviously alluded to the fact that you're a strong-minded guy but can you feel the tension in, in the ground that's or I'm trying to figure out do you know whether the fans want you to do well or, or what um, no, I, th I, th I think it was it was decent there I, I thought they were good with me uh, um, to say that I was enjoying it and then I, I actually done my, my cruise ship after eight games right. in training and we petulant boy had, we were playing a possession game and he cut the back of my leg and I went down and I ruptured my ACL. Right. Um, and I got back at the end of the season. But, you know, I was enjoying it. I was enjoying the, the playing in his team. I thought he was years ahead of the things, Hoddle. Oh, was he? Aye, I, I thought he was... Uh, that was one, one real plus, you know what I mean? Like his pre-season, what he'd done. and He was quite a guarded guy. Aye. You know, I think he'd get his fingers burnt with a... England stuff and the, the things he'd said but Aye. you know didn't really trust a lot of people right but I think he's in terms of what he was doing and how he'd set things up and uh, I just thought he was he was way ahead of his time was that a real visionary but do even think? doing stuff himself he was a great player Aye. but see doing set pieces and he had uh, Paul Lynch and Dan Anderton in the team that we always was and he's like no no I want it this way because he was at Marseille wasn't he was uh, he at Marseille Aye. He was, uh, uh, I think they loved him there. Uh, he, but he was both feet. Uh, you know, um, probably 
Liverpool's only one that I've seen in that out. Natural. Natural, he couldn't tell. Yeah. But was he stronger? Because uh, I think I remember going to Marseille to do a gig one time and we were invited with the Marseille team or something. Mm. I can't remember what happened. Was it Monaco? It was, it was Monaco, wasn't it? Or Monaco. Whoever the team was, that's terrible, isn't it? It was Waddle. Waddle was at Marseille. That's who it was. It was Waddle. Uh, Although they didn't sing together. <laughs> <laughs> but I always remember it wasn't, it wasn't, you're right enough, it was Waddle. But mm -hmm. remember the wee things that you used to type your name and they turned the wee wheel and yeah. a lit, I can't remember what they were called. Um, I bet you Steph knows what they were called. Right, no way, boy. There you go, <laughs> and uh, and it still had his name on on his locker, mm -hmm. and I thought, God, they must have loved him. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I wouldn't. I've never been a team player, so I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, that's unfair to say I've never been a team player. I can play in a team, but I like my own wee thing, and I kind of like do do what I do a lot of the time. And probably I don't like getting told what to do, um, and I would never have been a football player anyway. But even if I was. Is it hard when, you know... It's hard you know, when, when you, with change, you know, when you're re, re, um, meeting new people again. Meeting new, and I think the, the difference when I went down there, um, although I stayed in Edinburgh, but Edinburgh to Glasgow is it's no far, but we had a good uh, social, we had a good group of boys uh, that we would go and do stuff with. You know, we'd maybe have a game of golf, or years gone by, we'd go to go-karts, we'd go for a meal, uh, a few drinks, or maybe have the wives. But down there, they just, they train, they play, they go home, they all s spread out. Right. You know, they don't socialise. Yeah. Um, I was like, what do you do now? It's, you know, you're used to having that camaraderie Aye. and team bonding. Especially uh, after 10 years at Celtic. Yeah, so it was from that to, to nothing. It was difficult, obviously, my wife, with the, the wee one was just born and my son was uh, one. Right. The Irish twins, he, both June babies, but a year apart. Aye. Uh, you know that that was tough. You know, and she's uh, she's obviously trying to, to settle in a new place. And my oldest, Erin, was uh, six, six right. and a half. Right. She had to go to school down there. She didn't didn't like Oof, it. And yeah. So it was a lot of things there. It wasn't it? You know, when I'm away traveling, the championship, uh, you're away there. You're away at Norwich, you're away there. Yep. Up and down the country, you're away as well. Aye. Uh, so it was tough, tough for the family. You know, because you look at even that. Israeli lad with Celtic that went back home mm -hmm. to say they just couldn't settle in Celtic at all. I mean, I think COVID may have had something to do with it, yeah. but he's, for all intents and purposes, he, I don't what I know about football is nothing. But he looked like a good player. Yeah. He looked as if he was a decent defender. That's what I find difficult though, uh, because just like I said at the start, when you go on there, it's your happy place. It's your job. Aye. It's your fight. Aye. When you come off of that, it's different. When your family's no settled, but it shouldn't affect you when you go on to play your gig. Aye. Do you know what I mean? No, absolutely. I don't. That's what I find difficult with people. Aye. You know, and it, it's your, it's what you're paid to do. It's your job. Exactly. But if you say, oh, oh, his, his game's suffering because he's no like that. It shouldn't it really suffer. You should suffer after the event. Absolutely. When you you're in a, your hotel, ah, you're in a hotel, you're and it's so like I'm not happy here and whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's, I think that's just a sign, sign of the times about society and people in general. Aye. You know what I mean? It's, like, it's like. You know, it's. I'm not saying it's weak, but no, no. It's just I think it's different now. You just like you know what I can roll the sleeves up, go on with your job. Ah, get and the job af done. After that, then you can you know yeah. you adjust it or do things at the end end of the season or it's early. It should not affect you switching off in a, in a game or not Aye. concentrating or you know and the guy you're talking about there he. he a kind of beast teller on the season. He went from really good last year, the year before, to him going, where's he gone? You know, the European game, I thought, uh, the Champions League qualifier, the uh, Clues game, he switched off, and you're like, what's he doing? And he, one or two other ones, and they got to the bit, you could see his game suffering. Aye. But I was like, but if you're not happy off the park, you know, when you go to the park, though, that shouldn't, Still be there. It's you know that what I mean. Be. Well, a boxer or somebody else going into their, their fight. Yeah, they want that. My wife's not happy living here, but I mean, I'm living there. But I mean, but this is facilitating it, and this is what I'm good at. Aye, and it's the it's the thing aye. that changes it aye. because it's it's the most important thing at that point in your job. Because you you can't do anything about that at that point, but you can do something about your job. And on that ninety minutes, you can influence there and make sure 
you're not the person letting down the team, you're not the person that's going to be the, make the mistake, focus and concentrating because there's only certain things as a person that you can control. Is there ever a point, Jackie, in your career as a footballer where, where you're able to use football by maybe you and Sam saying, should we try and find a wee team in Florida for a few years? You know, we nearly, in fairness, we nearly, the, the end of it, I was so close to going to Australia. Right. Uh, to Sydney. Uh, weird, because my son's called Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> Different spelling, but um, I'd, I'd been given a, offered a two-year deal before I went to Aberdeen. Right. Um, Big Terry Butcher was the manager at the time. Uh-huh. And kind of agreed everything. And he got the bullet. He got sacked. So I was close, very, very close. Uh, because... I think if we probably went then, they would probably would have stayed there. Aye. You know what I mean? The, that, that kind of lifestyle. Oh, and, aye, I'm sure. Um, we ended up going to Aberdeen instead, which was a mistake. Aye, and I think that even because Paul's out in Australia and see, it just seems... Yeah, nah, he's, he seems happy. He and seems happy. He's, he's in the business and that out there. Aye. A terrific guy. Aye. But um, he's, he absolutely loves it. I know, kids. and I think that because you're... Because you're fortunate and you're fortunate in life, and 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 I'm not geographically saying that one place is better than another and stuff, but when you're in that position, when you're in a position that you're saying, I suppose it's like a, a you know, a, a, a highfalutin um, sales manager or something, or, or yeah. somebody that can go, well, do you know what? We're not going to live in Edinburgh anymore. I've got a chance to go into yeah, New Zealand with the company. And I think as well, like, I'd. I'd lost my mum just after Seville. Aye. And I think that changed me as well as a person. It Aye. changed me like emotionally. I'd, I'd, I I'd became more emotional and but there and block things out and do things. Yeah. Uh, whereas like, do you know what, well, I can go to Australia. Maybe if my mum was still alive or there or you, you know what I mean, I'd I'd we were such a she kept everything together. because uh, I think people think that, you know, that Certain footballers, and you know, like you, you know, I'm not saying you, but people are like, oh, superhuman, nothing bothers me, Jackie, or uh, he'll be fine. And, and yeah, we, so we watch him on the park, and he's and he don't realize that you know, you've got family births, you've got family deaths, yeah, you've got your own kids to worry about, you've got your brother, your mum's passed away. They're all things that are really like I testing him, even in Seville. People talk about the Seville game, I mean, mad. My mum passed away just a couple of weeks after that, but the night before she had she was in hospital and she made my mum, my dad, and my brothers come to the game. She was we knew at that point she was yeah. You know, she took a blood clot and I'm up to high door in the ho- in the hotel and going to Brian Scott and Roddy the dog and crying yeah. and you know what I mean. I was like she's going to survive and um, and after the game they said, "Well, like yesterday, it's like a European Cup final it was the biggest game in my life." I wasn't probably, uh, you know, I mean, any other year I'd probably have been crying and distraught and everything else, but I just, I wasn't all there. Uh, you know what I mean? I'd, uh, uh, I came out after it. Uh, I think it's it. until something like that happens to you, you just think everything's going along slowly and boom, you know, and uh, it's like, and because uh, we finished in Seville, then I'd met up with the Scotland national team, we were playing in Germany, and then I'd had to go back. I said, I'll come to see you, the oncologist, and it was on Wednesday morning, and, and the gaffer, Tommy Burns, was number two at the time, I drove down with my dad, and they stopped the treatment at that point, and that was on the Wednesday, and I went back to Scotland camp on Wednesday night, and when I got back after the game Saturday, she was practically gone, she died yeah. on the, tu- the Tuesday morning, yeah. but it was just like the change, it was just kind of boom, and then suddenly, you know, everything was just... Yeah. Uh, but the following year, I get back in the team. Uh, I was player of the year. Maybe because I had no fear. Maybe I just, again, just that I'm just doing my job. This is my. Yeah. You know, away from there, I was obviously different. Oh, off aye, the park, aye. off the park, you're missing your mum, you're grieving, you're come to terms with things, your your life's changing. You know, you think yeah, you're still young, and I've, my mum's my mum died at forty nine, cancer. You know, but aye. so it was tough. It is tough, and I think that's what you know. I mean, it's obviously a mark of again who you who you are because you're able to that next year. Mm-hmm. You know, know that, that, that such an important time in your life. You know that, that 
you know, I mean, I can't speak for you, but I was, my mother and I were attached at the hip. Yeah, I you know. know. I, loved, I loved my mother, you yeah. know, absolutely. Do, and, you know, and I was with her when she died. And I right, same. Toughest day yeah. of my life, saying goodbye to what could only be described as your best pal, um, and funny and witty and all these things. But then, you know, you're expected to jump back on a horse again, you know what I mean, and just be the, the Jackie, you know, because those are the things as well that, that you can't publicly talk about that. No. You know, because people only want to hear about when is Jackie going to, you know, mm. th you know throw, you know, darn the day or somebody yeah. up six feet up in the air, you know what I mean, yeah. who comes ac ac across them. Or, mm -hmm. And I think that people forget that. People forget you're a human being and, yeah. and, and, and that, that, you know, that you're, that, that all that stuff is a lot more important to you than, than kicking a white ball about a park. You know, I it facilitates who you are and it facilitates who you are as your career. Um, so I mean, when 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 your mum passes away, you become how old are you? How old are you at this point? I was twenty nine. Twenty nine. So that's not long before you head to Wolves then. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of disrupting. There's on a lot of disrupting. As I said, I think that was it's maybe a, a combination of a lot of things as well. And it's just like you know what, you know, uh, I'm here. I'm getting on with things I'm just you're not thinking about things because I'd as soon as the funeral was there I'd, I like my, took my dad and my my mum's mum and dad who were still alive uh, they kind of nursed my mum for the last sort of six months and my brothers and their kids took them all to the south of France uh, booked a couple of villas went in there for you know just over a week and then we back we stopped at Euro Disney with the kids and just all together and it was brilliant, ah, you know, and it, amazing. It, but as soon as I got back home, and the gaffer, Martin, and he was like, you want some extra time, son, you know, and I went, no, I need to go back to do my job, ah. because if I don't, I'll sit and think about things, and I'll yeah. just go, so I went straight away, I wasn't, I still wasn't right, I went away pre-season in Sweden, right, and I was just in the room myself, and it was, it was tough, but, ah. as I said, I've always just, get my head done, get all my things, block things out, and you have to be able to do that as a player, Aye. especially there, not take things, you know, whether it's good or bad, you know, you just become, you become again, mentally strong. And there's also that old saying, and it is an age-old saying that's in, the, you know, that, you know, whether it's a bereavement of your mum, they, they, they don't want that for you anyway, they wouldn't want that for you, they don't want Jackie yeah. mourning and mourning yeah. and mourning, and mourning, so it affects his life and his, you know, you want to live, yeah. you know, you get a certain amount of time to live mm -hmm. in the planet, so absolutely, you know, I mean, it's probably, like yourself, it probably took me the best year, the best part of a year to finally get round and say to myself, I need to find a place for this, I need to find a place for my mum passing away so mm -hmm. that I, I can try and continue with what I'm trying to do, yeah. what Jackie's trying to do, and I think that, you know, that that's when I think it... When you have those three or four things that happen in your life at the same time, you know, you're thinking, fuck, is this just yeah. really bad timing at everything? And yeah. If, you know, it's somebody sitting, sinking the boot into me after having, mm -hmm. you know, 10, 12 brilliant, 15 yeah. brilliant years, and then something fucking bang, you yeah. know what I mean? And then uh, uh, your side swipe. And I think that as you go down, uh, uh, you know, to Wolves, how long are you down at Wolves? Two years. Two years. First year, obviously, was a setback with my cruise shit and everything else and uh, obviously the, the upheaval with the family I still kept my place in Edinburgh right uh, but after the year Sam and the kids moved back yeah they couldn't settle and they moved back to the house in Edinburgh and uh, Erin went back to her school in, in Musselburgh and everything else and um, so I was kind of down there myself for a bit uh -huh. and I'd been injured and again a new manager came in Mick McCarthy was the manager and uh -huh. Totally different for Glenn, just but you know, I've got my head down and kind of in the team. We got to the playoffs, and I wasn't wanting to stay. Aye, you know, like, I don't think he wanted to keep me anyway, uh, Mick. Um, and a chance to go to Nottingham Forest and in, in nearly Australia. Aye. And I ended up going to Aberdeen with Jimmy Calderwood, which Aye. was uh, so that's is, is Aberdeen's your last club, then, isn't it? Uh, no, really? I'd, I'd seen a two year with Aberdeen, but I, I walked out after a year. Right. I just I hated it. Uh. You know, he'd promised, I mean, I know he's, he's not been that well, Jimmy, with, I think he's got dementia and stuff, but sold it to me 
you know, the whole part of me was going back back home. I actually wanted to go to Hibs, but they didn't want me. Uh, right. I wanted to go and try and finish my career at Hibs. Right. We, John Collins was there, and we what younger lads, I think. Um, and Jimmy Calderwood phoned us and sold it to me. You know, playing in front of the back four, son. You know, you play on a Saturday, you'll be off Sunday, Monday, come in Tuesday. And it was just false promises. Uh, you know, I played the first two games. It was all right, first game. Second game, I played all right at home to Hearts, got man of the match, playing the centre midfield. Next game, I'm left back. I was like, you, but again, got on with it. You know, uh, I'm, but then he's doing double sessions on Monday and I'm st staying up there on a Monday. Everything that he promised me why I was coming back to Scotland, I said, well, it'd be quicker. It would be better singing for Nottingham Forest, probably the same distance from my house. <laughs> uh, uh, from Edinburgh, I'd be up for me. Leave it longer. But I ended up picking up a really bad uh, injury because I was travelling. Uh, I got the train, I got the, the train at half six in the morning in Edinburgh, get off at 9.35. This is all the stuff people don't know. Aye, uh, but... We got off the, the, the train at 9.35 in Aberdeen because we started at, it had to be in before 10. Uh, but when you were injured, you had to be in at 9. For the physios. So I had to drive up. Right. So I'm fucking driving for Edinburgh. Fucking up that road with about 13 speed cameras. <laughs> 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 knowing, knowing exactly where they are positioned. Uh, so what does it happen then? Do, do, do you finish up in Aberdeen, I you walk it. out after a year. I walked out and in fairness, my last game was a uh, semi-final and we had a big meeting, a big ding dong on the Monday. Right. And I've never done that before with, with a manager or in the dressing room, but it kind of came for me a wee bit with certain things because I went up the tunnel and I just kind of get everything off my chest and I didn't I didn't like it. I didn't right. like his training. I didn't like what he promised me. I didn't like anything about it. Yeah. Um, and I went to see him the next morning. I said, so I'll go now. And then ripped up my contract. I walked out in a year's... I said, I don't want your money. Yeah. It's not about it. I want to enjoy my football before I finish. Right. And then I uh, signed with Yogi, my old teammate. Yeah, right. And yeah. to be honest, he rejuvenated us at that uh, point. I got my love great back. Great character. Ah, he was, but he'd, he'd, he'd done what he said he would. He promised, to, you know, and I ended up being the Players' Player of the Year at 35. Jeez. So, you know, people had written me off at Aberdeen and said I was finished. Uh. Uh, and I went down there and, you know, had a good season. We got to the cup final. Uh, and enjoyed, I enjoyed working with him. Uh -huh. I signed a two year. Uh, uh, but he left at the end of that season, went to Hibs. Uh -huh. Then Eddie May came in with uh, Stephen Presley's uh, assistant. Elvis. Which was not my cup of tea. Uh, uh, and then, again, so is that you then? Is that you finished no, then? No. Uh, like halfway through the season, I, I went away. I could have, when Eddie uh, left the manager's role, Presley took over, right, and I couldn't work with him. Right, I just said I need to get out of here. Right. And uh, Partick Tassel, you recall, uh, phone is and Simon was at Partick. Said you want to come here and loan to end of the season, which is the only thing I could have done at that point, which I did. Right, went in. I was enjoying it. I played a few games and I broke my leg. Uh, again, again, uh, as you say, started and finished. Yeah, so. Uh, I was out from... And who was the manager then? Ian McCall. Ian McCall. Uh, so, broke my leg and I ended up signing... Is he not back there? He's back there now. Uh, and about to get them promoted if they're not already promoted? League One Eye, I think they're just about there. Uh, but, um, so I'd, I'd signed an extra year and then at the end of that, sort of coming towards that, Ian resigned and then I took over the team for the last sort of four games of the season and that was me into management. And that was the start of your management career? Yeah. And, and without brushing over with the greatest respect to Partick Thistle, you moved from there, did you go to the Arabs then? Did you go Dundee from there United. to Dundee United? Yeah. And then from Dundee United down to York and you and we, Simon, at that point, you sparked up a relationship or a, a management. Yeah. You know, he's your understudy mm -hmm. and you go down, you go from Partick Thistle, you've obviously... People are watching you because I remember people talking in the media saying, mm -hmm. Oh, Jackie could be the next Celtic manager. There was all that talk, wasn't yeah. there? I mean, I'm sure you must have heard it. Yeah. But you go up to Tanadays and, and then, of course, you yeah. get offered York. Yeah. What is that in the space of what, three, four, five years? Uh, two and a half at United. Two and a half? Yeah. But it was well, a tough I knew. I knew it was getting myself into it. It was, they had a lot of debt. Aye. And, you know, I'd, his remit, my remit was in five years was to get rid of that right. by, you know, uh, trying 
try to do a little bit what we've done at Thistle, bringing young boys in, developing, you know, and, and hopefully sell them on and reinvest it back into the club, which we've done. We did, didn't have We've done it with Robertson's at Queen's Park and obviously took the deer shifts in. And, but it was tough. You know, I'd, the first six months, I mean, the, the, the manager left, he resigned, Peter Houston. And yeah. said he, he couldn't, the kids weren't ready, couldn't take the club forward and couldn't live with the budget cuts. And he was right, the kids weren't ready, but we made them ready. Yeah. We worked with them, we put a lot of time, a lot in the first six months. I'd lost uh, Johnny Russell uh, to Derby and John Daly to Rangers, went to a pre, Willow Flood went to Aberdeen, Barry Douglas went away to Poland. And I had to slice the budget down, which we'd done. Yeah. And I brought in Robertson for peanuts from Queen's Park about Nadir Chifson and Loan and then Neil and Dillon went down to watch players that were released uh, in England and, and you know give them that little carrot to, you know an opportunity uh. and we'd done it we changed it around and we were flying and obviously we'd lost lost the players because they were doing well you know, uh. which happens happened to me happened to there but natural uh. obviously I had my contract get leaked uh, to certain people up there yeah and it became really really bad but the only thing is if I didn't have that in my contract the same thing would have happened or I lost my job because they've had to sell the players to get rid of the debt and different help now the only thing that, that changed it or the perception was you know I had bits in my contract uh. which if I had my time again I would have walked right I should have walked right. but I, again I'd done it for other people rather than myself uh. you know my staff you know, for me to walk out and then they look like they need to get jobs. Uh, uh, and, and the players. You know uh, what I mean? They to say, look, I, I, no, do you know what? This will be my third team in two and a half years. I'll do it again. And I, I believe I would have uh, if I had. But when you need is a strong leader to uh, say, do you know what? This boy's actually saved their club. You know what I mean? How do they need to go out of seven million debt? He's taken to back to back finals. He's got there. He's took that boy for there and turned that. When has it ever happened? recently in Scottish football uh, instead of being the negative side he said you know what even if we were to go down who better than to bring us back up and stand shoulder to shoulder as a leader right but he's like you know he fed me to the lions and oh, my aye. contract got leaked there's a lot of things he was doing and but I knew I knew before I went up there what kind of stuff I was getting myself into right but yeah, I, had a I, belief, I had a belief I had a belief in what I was doing and how I was doing things so how does York then get to find out that Jackie's looking for a job? He, I'd been out a month, I don't know, out a job a month, and it's the first time since 16. Right. Uh, and the owner, Jason, uh, Jason McGill, had fo I'd just painted pictures of my wee man. And is he a Wolverhampton lad, Jason? No, uh, York. York, York, York uh, sorry, owner. York. Sorry, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. York man. Yeah. Uh, and he phoned me up, and I was in the car, and... He said, look, uh, would you be interested in coming down to York City? And somebody recommended him to me and what he wanted to do with the club because he'd just been ploughing money into it. And, and is he a young guy? I know, for young, he's... Right. Uh, uh, I think Jason will be 54. Oh, he is young, right? Yeah, but I, just a... To be honest, I went down because of him. Ah. I, I said, I'll go down and we'll, we'll see. Because I, I, hadn't, I hadn't applied for the job. I hadn't put my name into it. Right. He came to me and would have been interested in over 100 applicants for the job. Jeez. You know, and I, so I went down there and I, again, I'd only been out a month. And I, I had my belief in everything else. Going, yeah, we'll, we'll do this. We'll bring the kids in. We'll, you know, we'll do the same things there. And, but it, it didn't work. Uh, and we two, two are still, I mean, we're best friends now, Aye. and we're best friends for life, but, you know, we look at, why did it not work, why did it there, and I had such a good chairman and person backing me, and he backed me probably more than anybody. Right. You know what I mean? But it's just a different him. animal, the different, I think it was just too much money down there. Not right. that, you know, when you grow up, you have a fight in the air, for them it was just a, I found it very... Yeah, I've got a year contract, but what about next year? You know, they'll go around and club to club to club to club rather than think, you know what, if I could do that, I could go to there. You know, uh, and I think that, I found that really difficult because I thought people were like, it was me, like me, like, like uh, me. Uh, you know, uh, just, do you know what, I want to win. Uh, I want to be great. I want to be the best I can be. I want to train the way I play. I want to, 
it's not in come to terms with that. When I'd seen people training, I go, well, how can you do that training? What when it comes to a game in front of a couple of thousand people, your fucking arse falls out. <laughs> How's that possible? You know, us as the minions often ask that question when you see somebody in a bounce game, you know, or you go to a reserve game Aye. and they're n- n- nailing it to the wall and then you go and see them in a, like a more competitive I think you match. see it now this year with, with no fans. Yeah. See, with no fans there, you see, there's no surprise. Look at West Ham's sitting in the Premier League in England. Uh-huh. Put in, t- where have they been? There's no, there's no prep, you know uh-huh. what I mean? There's no... What they're getting now, the same with Celtic, I think Celtic really struggle because... Liverpool as well, to a certain extent. Uh-huh. Because the fans are not happy there, they'll drive you on, they'll, uh-huh. they'll, you know they're not happy, they'll, it's that energy. Can, I mean, that's a good question. Can the stadium drive you on? Aye, 100%. Aye, you hear, I mean, just like, I used to joke when I was a young kid, running down that, the, the, the opposite side for the stand, you could hear wee bits, day something, fuck, <laughs> even though they're fucking... <laughs> 40-odd thousand or 60,000, you know, as a stadium, you steal wee bits or, you oh, know, right. and then some it's comical, uh, you know what I mean, but we used to joke about it. Because there's a famous one, isn't it, when they bring on a noni, <laughs> that famous, oh no, <laughs> no, no, a noni, oh no, no, you know, when they bring in that uh, one. So, York, I mean, that's probably, I mean, out of that, an immense career, you know, I mean, if you, if you were a betting man, that's great odds, isn't it, to, to think... It's famously, I mean, a brilliant career the whole way. There's a ten, Aye, it was, it's, I mean, it's, it's you look at the actual club, it's been a, it was a graveyard for managers. Jeez. There's not one person left there and went, you know what I mean? For me, it just scunnered me. Uh, I fucking was like, do you know what? I fucking hate football, isn't it? Uh, hate it. Right. You know, right. It, it really, but when I left, I was really resigning and uh, Jason, the chairman, is like, he says, look, I've never trusted anybody like I've trusted you. Can you stay and help me? My business is really, he's got a packaging business, is really taking off. Because he moves you up the stairs then? I went he? up the stairs, aye. Yeah. And I absolutely hated it. Oh, God. No, really? but I'd done it. I said, Do you know what? Because I'd. Again, you I had a lot it. of people against me and I'd tried to change so many things, tried to make things professional, you know, the things that they are, and just give it a real change because it was. It was a lot of people just taken, you know what I mean, from uh-huh. him, and I'd, I could see it all happening. I'm going, it was just so many fucking dominoes, you know what yeah. I mean. But it was so I had so many fights on all the time. It wasn't just the Saturday. Yeah. It was every day. There was fucking knives in my back, and I was like, you know what? Where I'm, let's let's have it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It was a fight again, and uh-huh. part of me is like, and I when I left to go upstairs, with their meeting there, and there was like a couple of hundred of them fans in the room. Yeah. And he done the bit and guy stands up, what what qualifications have you got to be a chief exec? And they all cheered him and they're all coming at me. And I was just like you know what I mean? I was like Yeah I can bring it on. It's just because I'm here because I promised him I would stay here to get the new stadium and that's what I intend to do. I'll stay here, I'll honour what I said I'd do, I'll help I help him. Uh, and we we've been through such a lot together. Brilliant. But through adversity. Yeah. You know, and We'd always kind of st- kind of get a lot of sh- shit for both both of us from yeah. both sides and like oh it's a bromance it's there it's there it's it's not it's because it's easy to throw stones yes you know what I mean it's it's easy but then you're taking it and then I mean st- I mean it wasn't just like one or two fights it was a constant even with the media guy the air stand up in the boardroom and I was up the stairs. Uh. And he put a thing in the paper about shoving a Christmas tree up my backside. <laughs> uh-huh. I thought I'd across the boardroom, I'd want to hit him. Yeah. You know, he was sitting with his boss and trying to, with the manager at the time, I was like, what the fuck are you talking to? So you you've built up, a, I mean, uh, you know, it leads me on to, because you have got a, 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 a friendship and a good friendship with him, mm-hmm. which, you know, leads me to, to speak a wee bit about your own health recently, because yeah. you had some, you know, I mean, my God, what, what a period in your life for a young man um, but he was right with you and he was a part of you and can he you tell us a wee bit and with, I don't want to pry and I don't want you to you know uh, you, you know you had a, a real life scare and it must have been r- very I difficult was, for you yeah it was um, you know uh, obviously when I'd, I'd collapse I had a, a brain hemorrhage um, I'm really fortunate to survive it 
it wasn't just the first bit, there was the second bit there, and I ended up in a coma, and, um, you know, I'd, I came out, and I had other issues after that, and even up to January there, hopefully it's my last operation, to put a, a stent in the artery, I had a, you see the scars at the back, I've got a shunt that drains the fluid into, from my brain into my stomach, right. and keeps, a, it controls the, so I don't have hydrocephalus, which is water in the brain, right, so it's it's just amazing what they can do. Uh, you know what I mean? Amazing, but it's yeah. for me it was just one thing after another. Yeah. You know, survive the first bit, get to the hospital there. Uh, and Jason was at the hospital because I, I get taken away in the ambulance in New York, and the CT scan me, then knew they had a, a brain hemorrhage, and they transferred me to Hull Royal. And when I got to Hull, my wife had followed. She had said, Sam has essentially saved me. Right. You know, I'd fell and I knew I was losing consciousness. I knew something was really wrong. But yeah. But for me, I was, I was, I was gone. I was, I, I was dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the coma, and it's been pretty, pretty mental since. Because I look at things. I was looking at thing on Netflix about surviving death. Aye. And there are things on it, you know, and they're, they're saying like in a coma. Your brain's not working. It's, it's off, you know, you can't see things, and I'd seen things, and I looked at this thing on Netflix, I'm going, because oh, I'd put it down to the drugs that they were giving me. Um, and growing up, we weren't religious yep. at all. Uh, and as I said, I'd seen things in there, and since I came out last last week, I got I get baptised in December there, and joined the Catholic Church. Jeez. Just mental, which, you know, my dad and everyone else are not like, atheists, and... Aye. Not that we're pushed anything, just kind of left know. their own bit. But I just, uh, what I experienced, it was, it was for me, I was dead. Aye. Uh, you know. And he sounds as if he's became a real good family friend. And, yeah. And, a, yeah. and a, a confidant and somebody that you could... He was there and he says, we've been through so much and uh, with his wife as well, you know, the great people and uh, a friend for, for life. Absolutely. It, it never, as I said, it never worked. You Aye. always look at it there yeah. and uh, on the football side, but we knew what we wanted to do, we knew it's there for fun, one reason or another. Yeah. You know, we would look at it and like, yeah, but it's life. Oh, yeah. Listen, you've got a vision and, you know, and and, and, and both of you went to, to, to fulfil that vision. There's nothing wrong with that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I mean, I speak to Ian Woosnam, who, not in a different circumstance, helped me out, you know, in, in my own career with... with yeah. Without knowing anything about I, the music, I think they're industry. there, and it's like you ever want to go back into management, and it's like I don't miss it, Aye. and it's not because I'd lost confidence, I'd lost um, my passion a wee bit to it. Yeah, standing at the side of the park, and you know what I mean. I kind of lost a wee bit of that kind of, you know, uh, and you think people are the same as you, and you think they want to win, and they want to there. And I'm going, why am I giving all that? Aye. I'm not getting that back. Aye, do you know what I mean? As a, as a player, you like, do you know what? I can influence this today. I can make sure I'm doing my job. I can stop my goal going in. I can win that tackle. I can, as a manager, you're looking around and hoping. You know what I mean? Aye. It was a, a spell at United where I actually had all the young kids and we, were f we scored four goals or more in seven games. We beat records. And I was buzzing for a Saturday. I was yeah. like a wee boy again myself. Yeah. You know, I was just the early 40s. And I was like, can I wait to start? Who's going to score this week? And my left back score, my right back. I'm going to watch something that I want to watch uh, because I think that's the biggest thing with football. It's an entertainment. Yeah, absolutely. But, but it isn't anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, that, that side that's gone and go, I want to go and I want to watch a good game of football. I want to see them attacking. I don't want to see my goalkeeper passing it out to the centre half to go to the other centre half to go to the left back to back to my goalie Aye. but my goalie thinks he's really good with the ball at his feet I would just want him to fucking save it Aye. I want to see them putting the ball in the net which is the object of the game absolutely and attacking and get, and you watch old games I watch old games back now Aye. which I didn't do at the time go we were we were decent you know what Aye. I mean we were attacking there with Tommy everything was Oof. it was all that way Aye. No, like no passing it back to Big Yogi or a marsh at the uh, back, it's like, no, into Pierre's feet, into the empty feet, out in Paul McStay, and, you know what I mean? Uh, and I just think a lot of that's kind of lost now about different 
Do you think that. Jackie Senior thought that about your game? <laughs> Probably, maybe, maybe, maybe it's football and, and, and things. It just it changes, uh, it evolves, and you know you watch old videos, you watch stuff there. But you know when I grew up, you watched the Gleish as it was oh. my hero. You go, and I and I trained with him when he was a manager, and I played with him. He was uh, when John Barnes left. I was like, this is, you know, what I mean, he was God to me, oh, uh, right. uh, Kenny. Uh, yeah. Just. Just love watching like a wee boy in my boots, Doug Leaf Silvers. Aye. But um aye, it just it just changed so much, I think. The and I think, you know, I mean if, if that I understand that love and respect that'd be like Bono to me, you know, do that just he's got everything that that, that, that you want, you know, in a in a in a total professional and I think yeah. what does tell me, um I could talk to you all night because it's a great chat, uh, What's in store for Jackie and Sam and the kids and where he's going now? You're still down in England and you're involved in football. You've got your agency uh, and and you were telling me it's great that you're looking after three or four young girls now as well. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant to see the the female game yeah. uh, coming on. Um, but is that what you see now? Do you see because um, you know you were saying earlier on your dad's loving life in Spain and enjoying himself and. Is there a is there a do you want to keep being an agent for the next ten years till till Jackie goes um, out? I don't know. I think it's is just going to play it. it. Aye, I think just now I've not really. This is what I'm doing. This is there. Again, I'm not looking too far ahead. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Last year I was just like, you know, I've got a different outlook in life. A different yeah. there. I, um, how I go about things, and wanting to enjoy it. I think you have to enjoy it oh, because you. I know we work. We do things, we do things sometimes we don't enjoy, it's, uh, I, would, and I wouldn't say pressure as a manager, it's no, I, I never found that it was a pressure side, it was, it was a frustration for me, you know what I mean, because, you know, and maybe because I'd been and played certain ways, I wanted to see my team playing a certain way, I wanted to see them attacking, I wanted to see them getting at people and enjoying it yeah. and playing football the right way, and then when I didn't get it, and I thought maybe or maybe I'm not right for it, you know. Uh, maybe, maybe maybe it's you can, I can't get satisfaction. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Uh, I can't I can't bottle that. And uh, uh, even when I was winning, like you know what I mean. Uh, well, I mean I think I, that, you I know. Just, I just think yeah, there. I, mean, I tried my stint in managing, you know, young artists that were coming through. Yeah. Uh, and I may revisit it, but I knew at the time I thought. Oof. There's certain things I haven't finished yet, and there's yeah. certain chapters in your life and your life yeah. that I'm sure you've, you know, you've just became a, a Catholic, and you've got, you've got this new found life now that you thought yeah. you thought, God, my life was away there, you know, I was yeah, I was a bit dead, and I think that's that's a, and it's all I think it's always worse for people around about you, aye, you know, your kids and your your wife to see, and your obviously my dad. Aye, you know what I mean. When, when you're dad, yeah. when you're in that that position, and because you're obviously lying there and unaware of what's happened, and but I knew there was something meant really wrong when I was in the operation. Mm -hmm. I knew, I knew that uh, I was gone the other side. And, and I well, you shouldn't be, but you know, and it's true. You know that you were saying about your mum passing away at forty nine. You shouldn't be burying your kids. Yeah, you know that's a that's a natural thing for us as humans. You know. Yeah. You, you know you should. You know. Your, you know, your dad's not going to be standing over a hospital Aye. with you down in York thinking. I think as you go, oh, that's it's no, it's no fair. You no, know. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> you go, do you know what? I've lived my right, my life there. I thought it was quite. I was at the gym on th the Thursday before it. Aye. I thought I'm, I'm fine. And yeah, why, why, why am I? Why has that happened to me? Aye. You know, I, I'm, I'm not really unhealthy. I don't drink a lot. I don't. I've never taken drugs. I've never done anything. Yeah. You know, it would be put you in a. A position in that position that yeah. you would should have hung around with me for three years. <laughs> You'd have been naturally in that position. <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean. It's yeah. like you know, you work your whole your days. You you, uh, you go and do you know? I want to enjoy myself. No, quite. I right. want to there take away the stuff there. I want to enjoy myself before I do. I can die. Right. And I don't think. I mean, and and, and I'm, I'm not stupid enough to think that your life's been a bed of roses. You've been a fortunate. Oh, young, I've been very lucky. You've been a I've fortunate young guy, and, yeah. and, and but it isn't all smooth sailing, and it, and it isn't, and and I mean, and I, listen, whatever it is that you're going to do, Jackie, I, I know it will be good because I've known you for a few years, and you know we're not Christmas card pals, but we know one another, and, mm -hmm. 
and, and I think it's magic. You, you spoke a wee bit earlier about potentially, maybe, and I won't reveal anything about you might write a book one day and, you know. No, I'm doing that just now and I found that really therapeutic and I don't want to just say the religion stuff and everything else. It's, uh, again, the, I don't it's want all right, to... It's alright, it's fine. No, but it's, I don't like, like preaching to people this, this and that. I mean, because it's just something do, do, do I tell everybody what, what I thought you know people they heard that they're, they're, they're telling what I experienced and go and I, I get wee flashbacks of what, what happened at the time and I can remember everything yeah. even when I, when I came out of the coma and my kids and that were there I'm like wee bits you, you know, there and I thought oh it's the drugs they give me uh, you know the, the, I was hallucinating because I was hallucinating when I came out of the coma I, I remember yeah. all I remember the, I think the nurse was going to kill me and different yeah. things were happening and it was just... See, I'll find that part of your book much more interesting than a, than the a, fight, than a fight up the tunnel or, yeah. or an arguing with Martin Lanil or an arguing with, with, with you and Sid, Aye. you know, yeah. Simon Donnelly. You know, I'll, I'll find that aspect of your life in your book, which I'll look forward to in that, by God, you better bring it out in audio because I'm not the best reader. <laughs> Near uh, <laughs> so, you know, but I, that to me is much more interesting. I'm glad we've got to know you mm -hmm. a lot better than than because Seville was brilliant and watching Jackie McNamara for me as a Celtic fan uh, coming from Dunfermline to us and you are to me uh, you paved the way for young guys like Kieran Tierney and you know and, and players like you mm -hmm. you're that stature that ilk of a, of a football player but your life is much more than just that Jackie and, and it's been really good to, to you know to know more about you, know more about your mum and dad, and mm -hmm. and the and a wee bit look into your own life with the kids and how important you are to your kids. You explained to me you know, that great relationship that you've got with your kids, you mm. know, and yeah, that's worth more than anything. Oh, it's 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 that's what it's all about. To Absolutely. be honest, you know what I mean. It's you you you're there and you know you try and uh, pass on wee bits with them and. Um, we were, we were very fortunate even with, with the kids, you know what I mean? We didn't think we were going to, we could have kids at yeah. the start, me and Sam, you know, and we were, up, we were up to adopt kids at the time and then, you know, we Erin came along first, we Miracle and the other two came later on. But, mm. uh, you know, it's, it was, uh, it wasn't all plain sailing. No, well, listen, Jackie, I wish you a million times success. Cheers, you too. Brilliant talking to you, thank you for... Cheers, thanks you know, for having us. No, no, it's a pleasure, thank you. And, Keep watching, folks.